Hello everybody, thank you for tuning in to the Forgotten Film Channel. Today's Forgotten Film star is Nancy Culp. Nancy Culp was born on August the 28th, 1921 in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. In 1943, she graduated from the Florida State College for Women with a degree in journalism. She then transferred to the University of Miami with the intention of getting her master's degree. She quit in 1944 to join the Naval Reserves. She served through the entire war. She received an honorable discharge in 1946 with the rank of Lieutenant Junior Grade. In 1951, she married George Davis. They moved to Hollywood, California. She got a job working in the publicity department of MGM Studios. Shortly after she began work there, director George Cooker saw her. He loved her look and convinced her to audition for a role as a character actress. In 1955, she got her first ongoing character role. She played Pam Livingston in 15 episodes of The Bob Cummings Show. And Nancy Culp was a pretty ordinary looking woman and gossip columnists at the time were evil. They actually referred to her as the homeliest woman on television. Regardless of how the gossip columnists felt, her look and her talent made her one of the strongest character actresses in Hollywood. She was in demand and she often appeared in multiple shows at the exact same time. In 1962, she accepted the role of Jane Hathaway on the television show The Beverly Hillbillies. She appeared as Jane Hathaway in 247 episodes all the way through the show's cancellation in 1971. During this time period, she also continued to appear in other television shows and movies, including being the voice in the, of Fru Fru in the 1971 Disney cartoon, The Aristocrats. Throughout the 1970s, she just kept on acting. In 1975, she had a recurring role on the show Sanford and Son. She also became a very familiar face as one of the celebrity contestants on shows like The Match Game, The $100,000 Pyramid, and Hollywood Squares. In 1981, she had an unsuccessful run for a House of Representatives seat in the Pennsylvania 9th District. After that, she began teaching an acting course at Juanita College and appearing in an occasional television role or movie up until her official retirement in 1984. 1989 was the same year that she moved to Palm Springs. She became active in numerous charitable organizations and she had an interview with a local magazine where she came out as either being a lesbian or a bisexual. In 1990, she was diagnosed with cancer. She did not respond to the chemotherapy treatments and she died on February the 3rd, 1991. She's buried in the Westminster Presbyterian Cemetery in Mifflintown, Pennsylvania. During her 38-year career in the entertainment industry, Nancy Culp appeared in 30 movies. She made 383 appearances on 61 different television shows. This includes the 246 episodes of the Beverly Hillbillies. In addition to that, she was a celebrity guest contestant on 64 different game shows and made nine interviews. And what we have for you today is a classic episode of the Beverly Hillbillies. Featuring Nancy Culp as a Melbourne Drysdale secretary, Jane Hathaway. So I want to thank you for tuning in to the Forgotten Film Channel. Have a great today. Hopefully tomorrow will be even better.
Jethro, tell us exactly what happened with Ms. Drysdale. Well, I come around the side of the house, and I see this here lady fighting with a furry-looking varmint. Turned out it was Ms. Drysdale. Uh, no, Uncle Jed, it was a fox. <laughs> lady was Ms. Drysdale. Oh. Oh, yeah. So, I grabs up the shotgun, and I says, step aside, lady, and I'll shoot it. Well, instead of that, she whipped around and throwed that thing in the air. Well, I shot it on the fly with both barrels. Move my wife's box for her to shreds. No wonder she fainted dead away. I caught her just in time. The chauffeur had to help me get her into the car. She was out like a light. She was stewed to the gill. <laughs> you said it took two men to get her back in the car. <laughs> you know, Jethro, could be that there fox was Miss Drysdale's pet. Why in tarnation would she want a sneaky old fox for a pet? Because them kind of people are liable to do anything. What kind of people? Ask your pa. Well, I reckon I can't protect you from the ugly side of life forever. You see, Miss Drysdale was what uh, city folks calls a... Uh, what was her husband called at Granny? A uh, hypochondriac. Yeah. That means she drinks a little. <laughs> a little? Her own husband said her bedroom was full of bottles. <laughs> The doctor says she'll sleep for several hours. He gave her a sedative. What about Claude? Oh, she insisted that he have a sedative, too. <laughs> <laughs> Poor dog, he's probably the first canine hypochondriac. Well, let's be thankful for one thing, Mr. Drysdale. What's that? The tree outside the window. It completely obscures her view of the clapped estate. Yes. And if that tree should ever lose its leaves and she gets one look at those hillbillies... It shall not happen. The Clampets have agreed to accompany me to Palm Springs. Fine, fine. Now, you keep them there until I get Margaret back to Boston. Can do and... will do. <laughs> Maybe it's for the best that you know about that poor woman next door, Ellie. Now you can pitch in and help us get her cured. Yep. I'll need you to help find the makings from a sober up mash. That's what I'll give her first. But Miss Jane said she was taking us to Palm Springs. Folks don't run off and leave the neighbors when he's in trouble. What are you going to need for your silver up mash, Granny? Well, most of the stuff I got. But it takes a, a coon root, rich weed, sourdough, stunk oil, chimney soot, spider webs, horse bed, snake board, pepper leaves, chicken gizzards, stunk water, coal oil, Slippery elm ooze and turpentine. And a few more things that's secret. Oh, and the biggest toad you can find. Granny, you use a live toad? That's just for testing. I give it a swallow to see how fur it jumps. Last time Granny used a sobering up mash, set a new record. Clean over the top of Elverney Bradshaw's clothesline. That's tall jumping for a toad. Oh, this wasn't no toad. This was Elvernie's husband, Homer. It was him Granny was sobering up. Well, Ellie, if you're going out in the brush hunting stuff for Granny, you'd best put on some old clothes. Okay, Pop. Well, let's get a going. Oh, I perk near forgot. I have to have some goat's milk. After Mrs. Drysdale takes my sober enough mash. She has to have fresh goat's milk every half hour to stop the burning. Well, I reckon Jeff broken bar or some. Well-to-do neighborhood like this, folks, is bound to keep goats. Everybody <laughs> except us. We ain't even got a cow. Nor pigs neither. Nor chickens. We ain't even got nothing to pull a plow. You're supposed to be so dad blame rich. I'll bet we're the only family in Beverly Hills that ain't got a mule. <laughs> I reckon it is high time I was stocking this place. Even Mr. Drysdale's been after me to buy some cattle. Well, good for him. Yeah, just the other day he says to me, he says, uh, Mr. Clampett, you got $25 million in cash. You ought to put some of that money into stock. <laughs> well, we better get busy now if we're going to find... There goes that music again. <laughs> Did you ever find out where that's coming from? No, sir, I didn't. Every time I went to looking for it, somebody always come to the door. 
this time I'm going to find it for sure. Yeah, good hunting. <laughs> Me and Granny will be figuring out what stock to buy. Never fail. <laughs> Howdy, Miss Hathaway. Oh, please stop calling me Miss Hathaway. Now, if I can call you by your first name, Jethro, surely you can do the same for me. But, uh, please? Well, uh, howdy, Miss Jethro. <laughs> How about calling me Jane? I like that better. <laughs> well, are we all set to leave for Palm Springs? Uh, no, ma'am. Uncle Jed and me's going to town and buy some stock. Stock? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Drysdale, he told Uncle Jed he had ought to put some of his money into stock. He dictated a memo on that. But you needn't waste time driving into town. You can order your stock by telephone. Now, here are Mr. Drysdale's recommendations. He doesn't want your Uncle Jed to get a bum steer. Oh, Uncle Jed, he wouldn't buy no bum steer. There's should be cautious in the bull market. You've got to be careful with cows, too. <laughs> Jethro, you have the most delightfully bucolic sense of humor. Now then. Would you like to ride to Palm Springs with me, or would you prefer to drive and meet me there? Jethro? Oh, yes, ma'am. Would you like to drive your own car? Oh, yes, ma'am. I like to drive. Very well. I have typed out explicit directions. I've even drawn a map showing the exact location of the hotel. They have a lovely pool, and... <laughs> Jethro? Oh, yes, ma'am? I'm taking a bikini to Palm Springs. Is that faster than a train? <laughs> Jethro, you dear naive boy. You shall see when we go swimming. You, Tarzan. Mm. Me, Jane. No, ma'am. I'm Jethro Bodine. <laughs> I almost hate to see you change. I ain't gonna change. Oh, yes, you will. Under my tutelage, you will become an educated man of letters. Someday, I shall introduce you as Jethro Bodine. B.A. M.A. Ph.D. Awful smart woman, but that ain't the way you spell Bodine. <laughs> All I know is, this is the kind of stock Mr. Drysdale thinks is good. <laughs> what does that say? I-B-M. What does that spell? Ibum. What's an Ibum? I don't know. Next it's got, uh, Uses. Uses. Well, that's what's wrote there. U-S-S. -S. That makes sense. Well, maybe it ain't Mr. Drysdale's fault. Just between you and me, that Miss Hathaway can't spell for sour grapes. I don't need this list no how. Me and Granny's already figured out what we want. That's right. A pair of goats, three pigs, four cows, a bull, a mule, and a dozen chickens. We're going to get all that on the truck. Don't have to. Miss Hathaway says just call on the telephone and they bring them out. Oh, now, ain't that nice. Hello? Jed, I watched that banker feller. You have to stick your finger in them holes and spin her a while. All right. Bring that over to do it. Operator. Oh, howdy, ma'am. Uh, this here is Jed Clampett. I'd like to buy some stock. What number do you wish? Number? Oh, uh, a couple of goats, three pigs, four cows, a bull, a mule, and a dozen chickens. I'll give you information. Well, thank you, ma'am. I appreciate all the information you can give me. It's the first time I ever bought stock on the telephone. Perhaps I'd better connect you with a supervisor. Two heads is better than one. Supervisor speaking. May I help you? Well, thank you, ma'am. This here is Jed Clampett. I'd like to buy some stock. Do you know the number you wish to reach? Well, that's more or less up to the animals. But the number I want to start with is a couple of goats, three pigs, four cows, a bull, a mule, and a dozen chickens. <laughs> As soon as Nellie gets back from the Drysdale, she can milk this here goat. Mr. 
Our Bill sure has got a nice house, ain't it, Granny? Yep. Nice house, nice car, nice job. But the evil of drink has sure laid a heavy hand on his heart. <laughs> Never forget, Ellie. Drinking is a curse. Do you take a drink now and then, Granny? Uh-uh. Never more than a thimbleful. <laughs> You might have to hold Mrs. Drysdale while I spoon my sobering up mash down her. I'll throw a double scissors and an arm lock on her, just so you don't cut off her wind, so she can't breathe. Yes? Howdy. We've come to see Miss Drysdale. I'm sorry, madam, but Mrs. Drysdale cannot be disturbed. Are you her kin? I'm a butler. Oh, that must have been her maiden name. <laughs> you are taking care of her, are you? I am a butler, madam. Well, I'm glad to see that her family ain't ashamed to help her. <laughs> Who shall I say called? Well, this here's Granny, and I'm Ellie May. Paul and Jethro would have come too, but they're busy with the cattle. Uh, very good. Hold on now. We've come to see Miss Drysdale. Mrs. Drysdale is indisposed, madam. She is not receiving. Oh, <laughs> still sleeping it off, huh? <laughs> well... When she comes to, you just spoon half of this downer and then stand back. Yes, she'll commence to doing some tall jumping. <laughs> Don't fight you. We'll be back later with the goat's milk. Want me to stay and help you do for Miss Drysdale? We are managing, thank you. Are you doing the washing and the cleaning and the cooking for her? Certainly not. Oh, just letting it pile up on her, huh? <laughs> I am a butler. <laughs> oh. Want for me to haul him out of there, Randy, and wrestle him down? <laughs> Kin folks have certain rights. Family comes first. He sure is proud of that family name, ain't he? Yeah. To hear him talk, the butlers don't get wet when it rains. <laughs> Did you say something, dear? <laughs> well, speak up, dear. <laughs> Did I get you something? Come in. I beg your pardon, sir. The butler said some people from a ranch brought this for madame. From a ranch? Well, he said they mentioned cattle. They called themselves Granny and Ellie May. The Clamperts, they haven't gone to Palm Springs. Come on, you're through. Get him into the gate. That's the way. Suey, 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 suey. Ah, get in there. Ah, get in there. Get in there, big. Get in there, big. Come on. Get in there, That's the way. Suey. No, surely not. Marie, tell me I'm hearing things. You're hearing things, sir. Cows, chickens, pigs, goats. No, no, no. Anything I can do, sir? Pray, Marie. Pray. Hold your horses. I'm coming. Oh, hi, Mr. Jarvis. Did you watch it? Where's your father? He's tending the cattle. He brought cattle into this beautiful estate? No, he called on the telephone, and some men brought him in a truck. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm just fixing to go milk the goat. Come on out to stock him. Stock them. <laughs> Yes, sir, Mr. Drysdale, I finally took your advice and put some of my money in stock. How's that good, Bill Kelly? Just fine, Pop. As sure as a dandy pen, Mr. Drysdale. Yeah, good stout fence around the outside. Of course, that one across the middle ain't so much. <laughs> Bulls already jumped it twice and ain't even mating season. <laughs> Mighty fine looking stock. Of course, they need a little fattening up. Mr. Drysdale happy to see him? Granny, he was so happy he couldn't talk. He just kind of hung on a fence and made little gurgling noises in his throat. Well, that poor man has some joy coming to him. I'm glad to be able to help him to forgive his trouble for a spell. Here's the goat's milk, Granny. Oh, good, Ellie. Now, you run that right over to Mrs. Drysdale. That sobering up mess marks considerable unless you follow it up with fresh goat's milk. Telling you, uh, Mr. Drysdale ever find his tongue? Yeah, Paul. Whilst I was milking the goat, I heard him kind of mumbling, 
like he was giving thanks. He says, oh, what have I done to deserve this? <laughs> Lord, love me. Ain't that pitiful? Oh, hurry, child, now hurry. You know, Granny, it gives a person a mighty good feeling to help a neighbor. You betcha. And he needs us, because his wife's kin ain't no help. Who's that? Hi, that high and mighty Mr. Butler. That's who came to the door when Ellie and me took the mash over. Wouldn't let us see Miss Blythe. Well, now you can't hardly blame him for not wanting folks to see it. Uncle Jed, the bull jumped that little fence again, so I tied him back over on his side. Where's Mr. Drysdale? I asked him to come in for some coffee. It was the funniest thing what happened to him. You know how he was hanging on the fence of the stock pin? Kind of gurgling and mumbling and happy-like? Yeah. Well, all of a sudden, he points up towards his house and says, My wife, that's her window. Then he goes tearing off into the bushes like a bear was after him. <laughs> she took the mash and he seen her jump. <laughs> like hell, he's gonna get there with the goat's milk just in time. <laughs> oh. oh, Sonny. Sonny. Your mumsy just had the most ghastly dream. I was going to see our new neighbors, the Clampets, and suddenly this dreadful giant appeared with a huge gun and shot my beautiful fox first. <laughs> Isn't that the most dreadful? Claude, what are you eating? <laughs> oh, did Ravenswood bring my darling boy some nice? Claude. Claude. <laughs> Marie, Marie, come and get Claude. What's the matter here? Claude, he, he's having a seizure or something. Is something wrong? Yes, Marie, open the window. Yes, let's have some fresh air. No, 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 no. <laughs> Take Claude to the doctor. I'll get the window. <laughs> Well, darling, how do you feel? Dreadful. My nerves are shattered. Open the window, dear. Well, it, it might not be good for you, Margaret. Oh, don't be silly, Milburn. I need oxygen. Besides, I adore the fragrance of that jasmine that grows on the fence of that tennis court next door. <laughs> now, open the window. All right, dear, but first I have a surprise. Surprise? Hmm? Don't move. I'll be right back. Granny, Granny, that there butler fellow wouldn't let me through that door again. And he wouldn't take this milk, neither. Why not? He said he wouldn't touch nothing more from us without it was sterilized. <laughs> What's sterilized? Oh, we had that in school once. Uh, that means uh, soaked in alcohol. <laughs> alcohol? Appears to me like Mr. Drysdale's got two drinkers on his hands. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale must be in terrible shape. Fighting me. Scratching and clawing people and everything. How do you know? I hear her yelling and screaming clean from upstairs. She says, Marie, Marie, come and get Claude. <laughs> sure enough, pretty soon, this poor girl come a-running down yelling. Take me to the doctor. I got Claude. <laughs> family or no family, that woman needs help, and by thunder, she's going to get it. <laughs> surprise. Surprise. Melbourne, have you taken leave of your senses? You know I'm much too nervous to watch television. But darling, the doctors in Boston said your nerves were just fine. Those Boston doctors. They had the audacity to tell me that I was perfectly healthy. I said, I'm not paying you all that money to tell me I'm healthy. <laughs> Melbourne, I do not want to watch television. Well, you don't have to watch it, dear. Just listen. There's an exciting Western on. Western? Milburn, shut that off and open the window. I will. Oh, oh, there we are. Milburn, are you going to open the window or am I? I am, dear. <laughs> there, you see, the cattlemen and the sheepmen are fighting now. <laughs> If you won't turn it off, I will. Oh, dear, I, I, I do admit that's a very old plot, but I'm sure we can get something better. <laughs> that medical program, go back to that. Well, don't you think that's a bit depressing? I want the medical program. 
All right. I still hear the cattle and the goats. Yes, you see, you see, this is the latest thing in television program. A medical western. A medical western? Yes, I guess I think it's called Sagebrush Surgeon. Now that's the window he pointed to right there. I've got to get some fresh goat's milk up to that woman some way. I could shinny up the tree and climb right in that window. Ah, oh, Jethro, it seems fit for a man to be in a woman's bedroom. How about me? No, Annie. You're too young to handle somebody a wrestling in the grip of old John Barleycorn. I gotta get up there and have a goat handy to milk ever so often. I think I got it figured out, Granny. Huh? I'll get a rope, throw it over that limb, hoist you up to the window. Jethro, you get that Mr. Butler away from the front door. And then, Ellie, you take a nanny goat, lead it upstairs to her room for Granny. All right, Bob. But that little goat ain't gonna do nothing unless it's got that little chicken sitting on his back. That's all right. Raw egg ain't gonna do Mrs. Drydale a bit of harm. What are you doing? Packing. I'm leaving immediately. Oh, don't leave me. I love you. I love you too, Milburn. Why don't you come to Boston with me? You haven't seen Sonny for a long time. I don't understand. Why have you suddenly decided to go back to Boston? To see those doctors. Let them dare to tell me now I don't have a nervous condition. I'm even having hallucinations. It's wonderful. Hallucinations? I just saw a witch fly by that window. And there's a goat in the bathtub with a chicken riding on its back. Oh, you couldn't see them, dear. Only someone with my shattered nervous system. <laughs> there goes the witch again. Oh, Melbourne, I'm the happiest woman in the world. It's marvelous. Wait until those doctors hear this. Can't get in the attic and she won't open the window. Hice me up again. <laughs> here, Melbourne. Let's have a vitamin toast to my coming triumph. It's too late, Jed. What do you mean, Granny? We didn't get to her in time. Now she's got her husband on the stuff. <laughs> 